This presentation is about relative and absolute, absolute dating. It's how we know how old the Earth is. So our learning target. Uh, you're going to compare relative and absolute dating. So by the end of this presentation and your work, um, after you've completed your WISC, um, you should be able to compare relative and absolute dating. So relative dating, starting with that first. Um, relative dating is more about figuring out the order of events. Okay? Relative dating is not about finding an exact date of when something happened. Um, it's more about finding out what happened before a certain event or after a certain event. For example, um, if we look at this picture of rock layers, okay? And we'll, you'll see a video on the law of superposition um, next. Um, but this, rock, uh, this picture of rock layers, um, according to the law of superposition, the oldest rock layers on the bottom, the newest rock layers on top. So we know, for example, that um, this fossil here is going to be younger than the fossil over here because this fossil is towards the bottom of the rock layer while this fossil is in a newer rock layer. So the most important thing to know about relative dating is that it is um, more about sequencing, more about finding out the order of events. Absolute dating on the other hand is, tr is when scientists try to figure out an approximate age. Um, sometimes they can get pretty exact, but sometimes it's, it's more of a range depending on, on the type of absolute dating technique that they use. Um, some examples include radiometric dating, when they take um, and use radioactive elements to date um, objects, or a, another example is dendrochronology. Um, and dendrochronology is just counting tree rings to figure out how old certain things are. So absolute dating is based on physical and or chemical characteristics. Um, to get a little bit more specific about absolute dating, we're going to talk about radiometric dating. And there's certain things you need to know about radiometric dating. First of all, you need to know about radioactive decay. Um, radioactive decay is basically when atoms of certain elements, they aren't stable. So what will happen is that their nucleus will tend to lose particles. And, these, and, and the loss of particles will either create different isotopes of, of that certain element or different elements altogether. For example, carbon-14 will decay into nitrogen or uranium will decay into lead. Half-life, um, uh, as it sounds, half-life is the amount of time it takes half of the atoms of a radioactive element to decay. So it's, it's a form of measuring. It's how, how we can figure out how old something is. We, we look at the half-life of carbon, or we look at the half-life of uranium in order to figure out how long that element has been decaying. Carbon-14 dating, or um, carbon dating, um, is a method for telling the age of fossils or other objects based on the decay of carbon-14. Carbon-14 is an isotope of carbon. It has, um, it, it um, has a different number of neutrons than carbon-12. So it has, it has limitations though and it loses reliability after 40,000 years since the half-life of carbon is so short. And uranium dating, uranium-235 dating, can be used for uh, more accurate dating past 40,000 years and on inorganic material. Um, you can't carbon date something that doesn't have carbon in it. Um, for, so if you're trying to carbon date certain rocks or um, um, minerals, it, it won't happen because there's no carbon in there. It's an inorganic material. So uranium can be more... Uh, or can be a better choice when you're trying to figure out the age of inorganic materials.
Okay, what, um, what you're about to watch is just a YouTube clip about um, a, sci a researcher, a scientist, um, who is going to explace, explain the process of radiometric dating, um, where they look at radioactive elements to figure out the certain age of objects. Um, during the video, I'd like you to list three interesting facts about the clip, and at the end, I would like to for you to tell me why they would choose to use uranium to date the object they're dating instead of carbon. Hi there, Hamish Campbell here, Geologist, Institute of Geological and Nuclear Sciences. We're standing here on top of the Wainui Amata Hill, and it's late in the afternoon and there's a lot of noise. I'm here to tell you about time. How do we date things? To us Earth scientists, there are three really major things we deal with Earth all the time. Rocks, fluids, and time. We need to be able to date things, determine when things happen, and determine rates, how fast things happen. Just witness this magnificent landscape. Here is Wellington Harbour. We're looking over the Hutt Valley. How old is the harbour? How old is the land surface? How old is the Wellington Fault? We're looking at the scarp of the Wellington Fault on the other side of the harbour. How often does it move? These are fundamental sorts of questions that we need answers for, and that's why we need to be able to date things in our environment. The easiest way to date rocks is actually to use fossils. And here we have uh, some exquisite examples of some fossils. This slab shows some lovely trace fossils. These were made by organisms burrowing on the sea floor. They're probably burrows. And this rock's about 65 million years old. Whereas this one is a slab of rock with a whole lot of fossil balamnites. These are the remains of a type of squid. And this rock is about 150 million years old. Much more common. Uh, Shelly fossils, and here we have a mollusk, a bivalve mollusk, that most people will be able to recognize as a shell. The thing we do with respect to fossils is date the rock because we know the sequence within which, the sequence of life through geological time. And we can use fossils for the last about 550 million years. Now okay, so I just want to point out he's talking about sequence, so that's relative dating. Okay. So scientists use both relative dating and absolute dating to get a, uh, an accurate picture of what the history of the Earth, um, about the, uh, the timeline of the history of the Earth. Now the question is, how do we get actual numbers on the rocks? And that is the next step. In order to do that, we need radiometric dating, whereby we date actual minerals in rocks. This is a large piece of grey wacky, and grey wacky is the dominant rock type in New Zealand. It literally makes up the bulk of our landmass. Now, it's a sedimentary rock, and the question we want to know is how old was the original rock from which this sediment was derived? And in order to do that, we're literally going to take a piece of this rock, and I've got a sample here, and we're going to crush it up and literally extract the minerals in it. That we can date, and those minerals are zircons. Okay, good day, Phil. Here we are, here's the sample. Phil is now crushing up the rock in a hydraulic ram so that it is basically a gravel. The next step is crushing the rock up in a tungsten steel mill called a tema. This is a very noisy process, and the end result is a powder. doesn't take very long at all. And now that we've got a rock powder, the next step is to separate out the desirable minerals that we can date. And in this case, we're after zircons. That process requires a little bit more complexity. Of 
course, keeping track of the sample is very important so that one sample is not confused with another. Great. Thank you, Phil. This is wonderful. Well, here we have it, a sample of grey wacky. Five minutes ago, it was solid rock, and now it's in a powder form about the consistency of sugar. And in this are the minerals that we require for dating this rock and determining the ancestry of the grey wacky of New Zealand. Radiometric dating is based on sound physical principles, the ideas that Einstein came up with with respect to radioactivity. He explained to us what radioactivity is, how it is all to do with the loss of mass through radiation energy, and in the context of dating minerals, the change from uranium to lead. And uranium lead dating is the technique that we're going to use on the zircon minerals that we've extracted from our lump of grey wacky. Now here we are in this laboratory and we have a mass spectrometer. And a mass spectrometer was invented by none other than Rutherford. It's a very sophisticated sheep race, really. Imagine the man on the gate at the end of the sheep race and he's separating out the big sheep from the little sheep. Or in the case of our zircon mineral, he's separating out the uranium from the lesser smaller mass lead. And here is the magnet that does just that. The magnet is effectively the man at the gate. You can imagine the uranium being separated out because of its larger mass from the lead. Okay, so if you don't understand the sheep race analogy, that's probably more uh, because that's uh, common practice in New Zealand. And since we're not in New Zealand, it probably doesn't make sense to us. So a better analogy would be, uh, for example, um, if you've gone into a grocery store and you know the coin star machines and they take um, all your coins and you put them into one bucket and then you put it into the machine and then the machine will take it and sort it and it knows quarters, nickels, dimes and pennies based on size because each, each of those coins are a different size so it sorts them by size. The mass spectrometer is similar in that it sorts your sample by the mass of an object. So the heavier something is, the more likely it'll be attracted to that magnet and then you'll be able to pull that sample out. How do we get to an actual date? Quite simply, we know the rate of decay of uranium to lead. So it's just a question of counting the uranium, counting the lead, working out the relative proportions, and then determining the age. That is how we date Thanks to Rutherford and Einstein, we have been able to date rocks. They have literally transformed humanity. Our ability to do that has meant that we can understand the natural world around us in such a much more meaningful way. And we know, for instance, that there is nothing older than 4.53 billion years in our solar system. We know from dating that the oldest rocks in New Zealand, on Campbell Island, are between 540 and 560 million. We can date surfaces, we can date water, we can date glaciers. We can date just about anything using isotopic radiometric techniques and we can thank those great men, physicists, both of them, Rutherford and Einstein. Okay, so that is uh, the video. Uh, what I'd like you to do now is you should be uh, finishing up that question um, why they chose uranium over carbon dating. Um, remember you need to go back and do a summary as well as create your questions um, for your left hand side of your notes as well as the classroom question at the end that you'd like to ask um, at the next class in the case there's something you need more understanding with or there's something that you found uh, really interesting.